Hello, this is Mr. Hussam, and what we're talking about today is how to form questions in English. Um, this lesson is of two parts. This is part one, and here's what we have for today. Uh, we're going to talk about yes no questions, and then WH questions, or what we call information questions. Um, then subject and object questions. Later, we're going to touch upon negative questions. And finally, we will see how we can have short answers for these questions. So let's get started with yes no questions. Now, the title itself suggests that the answer to these questions is simply either yes or no. But how to form these questions? So we need to add an auxiliary verb plus a subject plus a main verb in the sentence. Sometimes we have already an auxiliary verb in the sentence. In this case, it's very easy to handle the sentence. We just swap or switch their places. Uh, the auxiliary and the subject, I mean. We, uh, we change the places and there we go. Um, and I want you to remember something, guys, about yes, no questions. They do not ask about new information. The answer is either yes or no. No information given. Let's see some examples. I'm gonna explain more, elaborate on those examples. He is a teacher. That's the first one. Now as you can notice here, indicated by the arrows, we change, switch the places of he and is. Because is uh, itself is an auxiliary. Auxiliaries are verbs to be model verbs, the ones we know do, did, and does. All of these are included under the umbrella name of auxiliary verb. So we just change the places and there we go. We have it. Is he a teacher? But I want you to notice one more thing. With this switch, some more changes happen. One of them is clearly here. The dot or the full stop is actually changed into a question mark. Of course, oops, sorry. Of course, to indicate a question. That's one thing. Two, which is like very important and uh, not, more, uh, not all of you would notice, which is the change in our tone when we say the sentence. The intonation, I mean. Uh, well, as you probably know, English is heavily depending on intonation. The way you say a sentence will change its meaning. So here, when we have he is a teacher, we have the normal intonation of an English sentence, or what we call a falling intonation. So we say it like this. He is a teacher. Notice my voice goes down towards the end of the sentence again he is a teacher he is a teacher okay whereas in the question it's the it's the exact opposite it goes up towards the end of the sentence this is what we call a rising intonation so we say is he a teacher again is he a teacher you can indicate this by using gestures uh, with your hands so you can say for example he is a teacher. Is he a teacher? In order to practice. Is he a teacher? Okay. You either go up or go down. Just practice it um, for a few times and you will get used to it. Okay. Uh, two. She can swim skillfully. So we just change the places of she and can. And we have, can she swim skillfully? Okay. Now I want you to notice something more here with number three. They went to the park yesterday. Here we don't have any auxiliary verb. Search the sentence. Nothing in there. So we need to add one on our own. But in order to add one like this, two conditions should be taken into consideration. One is the tense of the sentence. Two is the subject, whether it is singular or plural. So, looking at the sentence, we can easily know that it's in the simple past. So, the choice is limited. We don't have do or does. We only have did, because did is used with singular or plural. 
so we have it like this did they go to the park yesterday did they go to the park yesterday okay with a sentence like for also we have some special cases um, let me read the sentence for you I am reading a good book notice we have I and am so I'm talking about myself right if somebody else wants to ask me what am I doing so they need to use the pronoun you instead of uh, I because it's not me anymore talking they are doing the talking okay and with changing the pronoun you we cannot use am anymore we need a verb to be that fits that is suitable to you which is are so we ask the question like this are you reading a good book are you reading a good book no um, in some cases the context plays a very important role uh, you can use I and M and change their places so for example um, if you are suggesting something to your friends and then you want to assure this you can ask this question uh, am I right am I right okay you changed I am right to am I right but that needs much context so judge on the situation and then you can decide what to use okay but in most cases it is changed because we rarely ask questions about ourselves so in most cases like 90 percent or so you have to change are you and that goes on she has already had lunch so we just change she and has into has she already had lunch they live in france so look the same goes here there is no auxiliary verb we need to add one on our own the sentence is in the simple present and the pronoun used here is they so it is plural does uh, doesn't work here so we need to add do do they live in France do they live in France okay now secondly let's move to WH questions or what we call information question now WH questions are questions that start with the words like what, why, when, where, etc. These are called question words. And if you notice, they all start with WH, except for how, of course. So that's where the name comes from, because these words start with WH. Um, the structure of the formation of this question is very similar to yes no questions with one difference which is adding the question word at the beginning of the sentence and finally I want you to remember that WH questions they do really ask about new information so it's not like we want to have yes or no answers we need details we need information here are some examples <coughs> my name is Mike if I want to ask a question about this particular piece of information I can use what is your name I can ask somebody what is your name and they say my name is Mike okay two she wants the white color we can ask a question like this which color does he want which color oh sorry she it should be she I'm sorry which color does she want okay now there's a difference between using what and which. Both of them ask about things, but the difference is which has limited choices. When we have choices, use which, but when you're asking in general, use what. So in the second case, with the sentence of color, uh, imagine a situation where people are in the shop and they have like six or seven options six or seven colors so you can ask which color do you like which color do you want okay but if you don't have these choices or the choices are not limited there are many you can ask what color do you prefer or what color do you like I'm asking about information that I don't know I have no options here okay um, the teacher opened the door here we are asking about the door of the action so we say 
who opened the door who opened the door okay he is studying for the exam we need to know what he's doing so we ask what is he doing what is he doing okay five um, she usually leaves at seven o'clock so here we're asking about time the important point here is timing we can use when when does she usually leave okay when is used to ask about the time and where in number six is used to ask about places now I intentionally use the same sentence here they live in France because we can ask about this sentence in both ways yes no question or WH question remember here when we have the uh, sorry the yes no question it was somewhere here aha uh -huh, in this slide they live in in France do they live in France I want to make sure whether the guessing I have is correct or not whereas in this case I don't have any idea about where they live so I need to know I want this information it's missing I need to have it so I ask where do they live I have no clue where do they live okay there is a big difference between asking where do they live and do they live in France so be careful what to say okay that's it now third point subject and object questions when the question word is the subject of the sentence we don't need to use do does or did particularly when we have who or what as a question word remember the sentence I told you who opened the door so it's wrong to say who did open the door which is a very common mistake among learners so avoid it it's wrong simply say who opened the door okay let's have more examples if you have this case who did you meet in England so you here is the subject okay we need to be careful whereas in the second sentence who met you at the airport now who is the subject we're asking about who did the action and you becomes the object here in this case okay in the first uh, sentence you was the subject in the second it was the object so we need to be careful a bit here in this point um, yet another two examples what do cats eat I am asking about information what do the cat uh, what do the cats eat so I'm asking about uh, an object they eat the cats here are the subject okay I'm asking about the thing they eat okay in a way whereas what eats seafood I am asking what is or who is that creature who eats seafood who does this action okay I'm interested in knowing the doer of the action all right um, point number four is what we call negative questions this one is very important in social situations it will help you survive you know uh, so to speak so positive questions could have a yes or no answer nothing is marked I mean when I talk about marked or not marked in grammar I mean if something is not marked then it's okay but if something is marked then mm, there is a problem here it's not appropriate to say so it is marked okay so positive questions when I say do you like English club if you answer yes or no both cases are okay with me but when I ask you the question using a negative structure I am expecting you to answer no okay so when the expected answer is no use the negative uh, questions now I want you to compare between the last two questions if somebody asked you do you like Mexican food you are free to say yes or like in the case here you can say no not really the answer seems very strong here why very strong means not polite rude okay whereas if I asked you don't you like Mexican food I'm suggesting no you don't 
don't you like Mexican food? Okay, so you say, no, not really. This answer is more polite. Why? Because I gave you a hint when I asked you the question that I expect you to say no. So it's okay. All right. This is in grammar or in politeness theory. This is what we call saving face. You save the other person's face when you answer something they hint for you or they suggest for you okay don't be rude in a conversation try to be polite as much as you can all right so that's why i'm telling you stuff like this will help you survive will help you like get well with people finally we have short answers so in order to make a short answer for yes no questions we keep or repeat the same auxiliary verb after saying yes or no of course okay so for example do you speak Italian you can say yes I do or if no you can say no I don't okay notice do here is repeated in the answer yes I do okay have you seen this film no I haven't again have is repeated of course we add not to it and guys be careful since they are short answers then not is always contracted don't say no I have not no never say I haven't all the time or did you did you stay long no I didn't it's not no I did not we wanted to be short so no I didn't will you be late no I won't have you got a pen yes I have can you drive yes I can alright so this is it guys this is our lesson I hope you find it easy and I hope you get benefit in case you have any questions about any of the points presented please ask me and um, I want to remind you to take notes and uh, be prepared for the discussion I want you to be more active and good luck study well God bless you bye bye